There are several functions built into MATLAB that we can use to design complex filters. This will allow us to do things like set the cutoff frequency and the slope and the overall spectral shape of our filters. The first two functions that we're going to look at assume that our filter only uses feed forward delay. We don't have any feedback delay as part of the filter. For this type of filter, if we were to take the impulse response, that impulse response would have a finite length. The length would be based on the parallel path with the maximum number of samples of delay. Therefore, this type or category of filters is called FIR filters, so finite impulse response filter. The first function we're going to look at has a name of FIR1. It creates different types of basic filters, like the low pass filter, the high pass filter, band pass, and band stop. As part of it, we're going to set the cutoff frequency of the different types of filters. And we'll also set something called the filter order. This tells MATLAB the maximum number of samples of delay that will allow it to use to fit the best possible function to our specifications. The second function we're going to look at is called FIR2. This function allows us to create any arbitrary spectral shape that we would like. We're going to put in the amplitude and the frequency of different points across the spectrum. So we could say at low frequencies, we want it to have this amplitude. At our mid-range frequencies, we want to have this amplitude. And at our high frequencies, we want to have this other amplitude. Here, we're also going to put in that filter order, the maximum number of samples of delay that MATLAB can use to fit the best possible function. And in fact, what we'll do is experiment with different numbers for the filter order and see how that impacts the filter that gets designed. So let's switch over to MATLAB and look at some examples using FIR1 and FIR2 filter design functions. Here I've started a script called FIR functions. We'll first look at using FIR1. This is a built-in function that will create for me the impulse response of a filter. So I'm going to call that H, and I use the built-in function called FIR1. This function takes two input variables, n and omega n. So then I'll talk about what these things are. These are things that I can set ahead of time. So my variables n is going to be the filter order. I'll start out by just picking n is equal to 1. But I'll make a comment over here that this is going to be the order of the filter, which another way to think about that is the number of samples of delay. So we can have up to one sample of delay for our filter. Then we're going to have here omega n, which this has to be a normalized cutoff frequency between 0 and 1. I'll start out by making it 0 0.5. This means that it's half of our Nyquist frequency. So the number has to be 0 to 1. Normalized cutoff frequency. So by default, this is going to create for us a low pass filter. What I'll do is leave off the semicolon so I can see the filter that gets designed down here at the command window. Then I can also plot the freak Z frequency response of H. So I'll run this and we can see the results. So believe it or not, this FIR1 function gives us a filter we've seen before. It just has the gain on our dry path of 0 0.5 and the gain with one sample of delay of 0 0.5. There are no other uh, paths we have to worry about. In our frequency response, we see this is a low pass filter. It's going to roll off the high frequencies and allow the low frequencies to pass through. Now, we're going to look at a couple different um, of the variables that we can play around with here. So one thing we could do is increase the order, and we can look at the result. So right now, I'll just step it up to 2. And we can see that MATLAB now creates for us a low-pass filter that has a dry path, has the gain on one sample of delay, and a gain on two samples of delay. It gives us a slightly different frequency response. And as we increase the order, we're able to get a different type of uh, sharper filter. So I can make this 5. 
You'll see down here that we'll get all these different gains that MATLAB figures out for us. So here we have a roll off that happens and we're able to decrease the gain by a fair amount up here in the stop band. And if we want, we can increase this to be much higher. So I'll maybe make this 100. We don't need to see all those gains printed out down below. So in this case, we have a really, really fat, flat pass band, and then a sharp roll off that happens right around our cutoff frequency. And we have over 50 dB of attenuation up here in the stop band. So one of the things that happens as you increase the order is you get um, a sharper filter and more roll off that happens in the stop band. We can also change our normalized cutoff frequency. I'll make this 0.25. We can see the result. We've shifted down where our cutoff frequency occurs. So it's going to only allow these low frequencies and roll off more of the high frequencies. So that happens just by changing this one here. If we wanted to make this relative to our sampling rate, so let's say we had a sampling rate of 48,000 common in audio. What we might wanna do here is calculate our Nyquist frequency. So our Nyquist frequency is equal to half of our sampling rate. So now we can put this in terms of units of frequency. Let's say we had some frequency, we'll call cutoff frequency equals a thousand. Now what we can do in here is divide by our Nyquist frequency, cutoff frequency divided by Nyquist. Now I'll put it on the normalized scale that will still end up with one as being the Nyquist. So run this again. Now we're gonna roll things off, believe it or not, all the way down here is our 1000 Hertz. If you wanted to double check this, let's make this uh, 12K, which is again, half of Nyquist, and we end up back here in the center. So those are the different variations that we can make by controlling the order of the filter and also the cutoff frequency by just using FIR1 to create a low pass filter. But we can also very easily change this around to make it a high pass filter. So if you put in an extra variable here as a string called high, now when I run this, it's going to flip things around and it's gonna allow the high frequencies to pass through and the low frequencies are gonna get cut off. Just like everything we did before, if you change the order of the filter, it behaves in a similar way where it's going to not be as steep as a roll off that happens right around the cutoff. Everything else is the same. One additional thing that I'll show is that if we put in two cutoff frequencies for omega n, what we're able to do is uh, create a bandpass filter. So this needs to be an array. We'll comment this out. We'll make a new array here. Omega n is equal to 0 0.25 and 0 0.75. So we put in two cutoff frequencies. And if we, by default, if we don't include an extra variable here, that string, it's gonna create a band pass filter. So this is unnecessary. We'll run this. We can see that it cuts out the lows, cuts out the highs, and allows the mid range to pass through. We can step up the order. So that will end up with a more flat response from 0 0.25 up to 0 0.75 and roll off the highs and lows, just like we were doing before. When you put in two frequencies here, you can also switch this around and put in a string for stop. Just like before we could go from a low pass to high pass, we can go from a band pass to a band stop. In this case, we allow the lows to pass through and the highs to pass through, but we cut out the mids. So now that we've got H here, that is our impulse response, what we can do is apply this to some noise. So it's a quick demonstration. Let me go back and grab some of the code we've seen before for generating some noise. Just one second of noise. And we can perform convolution and also listen to the result. So here's our white noise. And initially what I'll do is play it back so we can listen to the original white noise. And then we'll also be able to hear it Right now, I've got it as a band stop where it cuts out a lot of the mid range. So let's listen to that. 
I'll run it and hear both of them side by side. Now I'll switch this around and just make it a band pass. So as you can hear, we're able to create some very, very sharp filters by using this built-in function from MATLAB. Now here with FIR1, we're limited to doing band pass, band stop, low pass, and high pass. What we're gonna look at next is how we could use FIR2 to create a filter that has an arbitrary frequency response. So I'm gonna comment out what we've got here and make another section for FIR2 and see how we can work with this filter. For now, I'm gonna comment out this as well. So FIR2 is a little bit different because we wanna be able to put in whatever gain we want and whatever frequency we want. So there's gonna be the similar thing we have to play around with is the filter order. So in this case, we're gonna get our impulse response H coming from the function FIR2. We'll put in the filter order and then we're gonna put in an array of frequencies, an array of linear gains. So F here, it's gonna be frequencies in M we can make as an array. And so let's do the similar thing we saw before. FIR1, we'll play around with different values for this and look at the result. Now, F and M need to go together. So F and M are going to be, I'm gonna put a comment in here for the order. F and M have to be the same length. And we wanna start out F at zero, these are normalized frequencies, and go all the way up to one. You can put in whatever number of frequencies we want in there. So let's start out, and we'll put in here that this should be uh, zero, and we'll put in 0 0.5 for half of our uh, Nyquist frequency, and then we'll put in one, okay? Now for every frequency we put in this array, we have to put in a linear gain. So that's what M is going to be. So let's say we wanna have unity gain, which is uh, zero dB. So that means we multiply by one. So this is linear again. So down here at DC, we're going to have a gain of one. Then let's say we want to have uh, three dB down or 0 0.707 at our half of our Nyquist. So 0 0.707, that will be our three dB down frequency. And then lastly, up here at Nyquist, Let's make that a gain of zero. So I'll make some notes here. So these are normalized frequency. And we just saw before, if we really wanted to, we could calculate these things relative to um, our sampling rate and relative to Nyquist. And these are linear gains. And I'll make a note that F and M must be the same length. Okay, now all we can uh, need to do is check and see what the result is. So this should create a low pass filter for us. Just like we would expect down here at zero Hertz, we have unity gain and we come up here to half of Nyquist, that's our three dB down frequency. And then between that and um, our Nyquist frequency, that's where we're going to roll things off. And if we wanted to, we could change this around. If we want to turn our low pass filter into a high pass filter, we just need to change where the gains are. So now that we decrease the amplitude at lows and allow the high frequencies to pass through. So now we just created our uh, high pass filter. If we wanted to, we could even make these uh, be an increase in gain. So let's make a boost that happens down here at low frequencies, put in a gain of two. That means we're going to increase by six dB down at low frequencies. And we'll do our um, cutoff here at 1.414 and then a gain of one. So let's look at this result. So now what happens is we increase the amplitude by six dB 
at the low frequencies. In the mid-range at Nyquist, we're uh, up by 3 dB, and then up here at our uh, Nyquist, that's where we're going to um, have unity gain again. Believe it or not, we're not just limited by having three frequencies in here. So let me show you another example where we could come up with a low shelf. So I'm gonna put in another frequency here of 0 0.25. And what we wanna have is flat gain that happens from zero up to 0 0.25, we'll have a flat gain of plus six, and then we'll go down to a gain of one, and we'll have unity gain above there. <clears throat> so as long as these have the same length, that's all that ends up uh, mattering. So I'll run this again. Now I've just created a low shelf, where I boost the lows by six dB, then we have a transition region, and then above half of our Nyquist, that's where we're gonna be flat again, so zero dB. So this is a way we can uh, really have a lot of control over how our uh, spectral shape is going to be. So for instance, I could go back in here and maybe add an additional um, gain term. So maybe I'll make this zero. So what is this gonna do? It's gonna boost the lows by six dB, roll them off 0 0.5, and then really roll off these high frequencies up above um, half of our Nyquist. So again, this is another filter, H, that we could use with convolution. Also, I'll mention that just like before, we could change the filter order, and it's gonna have an effect on the uh, how closely MATLAB is able to fit the results to what we're looking for. So this is actually a case, if you want a nice smooth filter, uh, then it might be useful to use a lower order. But if you really increase it up, then you can see that it ends up being more uh, jagged where it's very, very sharp around these points where we uh, set them. So I'm gonna go back here, maybe something more reasonable, maybe 20. See what we've got there. And now this is something that I can apply to our noise again. So I created H here, looked at the frequency response. Now let's go back and uncomment these lines of code and apply this to some noise and listen to the result. So as you're able to hear, we boosted up the lows, we gradually roll off some of those higher frequencies, and we created our own filter with an arbitrary frequency response. So that's how you can use FIR1 and FIR2. Both of them are very useful built-in functions to MATLAB for creating different types of FIR filters.